In this video, I'm going to be going over sprockets. There's three basic parts. There's the chain, the driver sprocket, and the driven sprocket. You'll see a lot of similarities with the gears on these. They have teeth, uh, the diameter, all of the equations are the same. The only difference is basically we've added a chain to go in between. Uh, sometimes gears can slip and um, they, they kind of gum up together. And so a lot of times with the longer distances, it's better to have a sprocket uh, with that chain on it. Right, well, just like gears, we have a pitch with our sprockets. A right, little bit different though in that the fact that the chain links remain straight lines. So as they move around the pitch circle in a chortle action or basically like that speed variation, it's because the links stay rigid and so they can't bend and go in that complete circular path. Okay, well, there's four basic types of chains. The roller chain, which you'll see the most common. Uh, the rollerless chain, they're basically the same, except for they just don't have that roller. The silent chain and the leaf chain. So like I said, the roller chain is the most common. So there's different types of those. We have a single strand chain that's for general purpose, the multi-strand chain, uh, which is for heavier loads and um, higher speeds. The double pitch chain for low loads but higher speed. And they're also a little bit cheaper, which is why the people go ahead and use those. The offset chain is for heavy loads with low speed. So whenever you're purchasing one, the sizes that they come in is always with a pitch of an eighth of an inch. So the higher the number, like if you had 50, then uh, that would mean that your pitch is five eighths of an inch. Okay, with sprockets, you're going to do the math the same way as you've already learned for your gears. Right? So we have the number of teeth, we have the diameter, we have the angular velocity, and torque. So you're going to do the same thing with the out over in. So our driver gear is going to be our in, the driven gear is going to be our out or instead of gears, it's sprocket. So you're going to do the math in the same way as you've already learned. And then if we have like compound uh, sprocket chain systems, you're going to do the math in the same way that we did the compound gears. So sprocket and chain systems work really well on the robots. So whenever you're building the robots, you're wanting your uh, wheels to go the same direction. Maybe you're wanting to save on some of your motors so that way whenever you can use a certain number of motors, uh, you don't have to use as many on each wheel if you're going to hook it up with a sprocket. Or if you're wanting it to go very fast, uh, those chains a lot of times are going to run a little bit better than the meshed gears because a lot of times those will slip. So here's some examples of what some people have done uh, with this chain and sprocket. 